Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about mathematical induction. And this is not necessarily a method to prove something, but it's really a common tool that you use within proofs. It's sometimes used to do direct proofs, but it's commonly kind of within, within big long proofs that you'll see in textbooks and things like that. And there's three steps to mathematical induction. First, you start with the base case. You show that the first thing is true. So show that it's true for n equals 1. And then next, use the inductive step. So now you show that, well, if any single ele element is true, then the next one has to be true. So you show that if n equals k is true, then n equals k plus 1 is also true. So let's think about what we've done here in these first two steps. First, we showed that for n equals 1, the base case, it's true. And then we showed in step 2 that if as long as the previous one is true, I know the next one is true. So if you notice those together, let you make your conclusion that it must be true for every n. Because if, if the next one is true, then n equals 2 is true. And then if the next one is true, it's n equals 3. And you can go all the way to infinity. And the basic example that you see a lot is the domino example. So you try to prove that if the first domino falls, then all the dominoes in a line will fall. The base case would be the first domino falls. And then the next case would be, well, when any domino falls, the next domino falls. So that's showing that, well, if n equals k is true, that's the first domino, that any domino falls then n equals k plus 1 is also true, well that's the next domino falls. Then your conclusion based on those two steps is that all dominoes will fall if the first one falls. So now let's see how this is work works in real life. So prove the sum of the first n odd numbers is n squared. So what I want to do first is I want to write this as some type of equation. So I'm going to say p of n so the sum of the first n odd numbers. Well, I know that an odd number is written as 1 plus, I'm going to write my odd numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus, okay, I think I've got the pattern now. It's 2n minus 1 equals n squared. And let's think, why did I use minus 1? Well, because my base case, n, base case n equals 1. n equals 1. And my, my first odd number these are really positive odd numbers, is 1. So I have to, so for 2n minus 1 to equal 1, n has to, or it needs to be minus 1 and not plus 1. Because if you did plus 1, your first one would be 3. And that would mess up the whole proof. So you got to be careful there a little bit. Make sure that when you do your base case, you're at the number you want to be at, which in this case is 1. So, so p of 1, so this is the base case. Let me write that here. This is what you start with. You try to show it's true when n equals 1. So, is 2 times 1 minus 1 equal to n squared? Well, I'll just write 1 squared here. Well, it's 2 minus 1 is 1 equals 1 squared. That is true. So the base case is true. So p of 1 exists. So now what I want to do is I want to show that, well, if pk happens, so pk, that's um, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus all the way to 2k minus 1 equals k squared. So if I know that this is true, so assume this is true, assume this is true, and my goal is to show that, well, if I add 1, if I now I do p to the k plus 1, I should be able to get prove that this is true as well. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus all the way up, and now it's 2 times k plus 1 minus 1. Well, actually, I'm going to write it a little different here. So let's start with the 2k minus 1. You reason you want to start it like this because you want to be able to address what we have in the previous problem that we're assuming is true. So I'm going to do all the way to the 2k minus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 because all I did was add that term, right? So minus 1 equals k squared equals k plus 1 squared, my bad. So this is what I'm trying to show. So what can I do from here? I'm assuming that this first one is true. And let's think, why can I assume this is true? Well, it's because I, I figured out that it was true when, in, when the base case for n equals 1. So I could basically say, well, k equals 1. And then now I'm showing that, well, if it's true for 1, then it's going to be true for 2. Because that would be k plus 1. So what can I simplify here? Well, I noticed that this part right here is the same as the above, which I was able to say equaled k squared. So I'm going to be left with k squared plus... 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 equals k plus 1 squared. Now let's do some simplification on both sides. I'll be left with k squared plus 2k plus 2 minus 1 equals k squared 
plus 2k plus 1. And if you notice, these are going to be equal, right? 2k k squared plus 2k plus 1 equals k squared plus 2k plus 1 plus 2k plus 1. So I have shown that if n is true, then n plus that if k is true, k plus 1 is true, and I've also shown that this situation is true when n equals 1, so I've done the proof. That's it. So QED, I've shown that um, this is true. The sum of the first n odd numbers is n squared because I showed that it's true for 1, and then I showed that, well, if it's true for any number, it's true for the next number too. So that's how you do it for this. So it's true for the next case. So that's mathematical induction. That's a basic example, and let's, let's look at one more here. All right, so for this example, prove that any positive integer number n for n cubed, cubed plus 2n is divisible by 3. So obviously, I'm going to write I'm going to write what I'm trying to really show. I'm trying to show that n cubed plus 2n can be written as 3 times some number k, right? Where k is an integer, obviously. That's just another way to write that it's divisible by 3 because 3 has to be multiplied into, into this n cubed plus 2n. So first, we start with our base case, obviously. So that's assuming n equals 1. So for n equals 1, I get n cubed, which is 1 to the third, plus 2 times 1. And is that divisible by 3? Well, it equals 3 times, equals 3, right? So 1 plus 2 is 3. So that means that my k would equal 1. So I figured out that it is true for the base case. So that's the first step. Now the second step is the inductive step. So now in the inductive step, I assume... So assume that it's true for the k, and then I try to make it true for k plus 1. So p of k says that k cubed plus 2k, actually I'll make it, I'll make it p of m in this case, because we already have a k. So p of m says that, well, m cubed plus 2m equals 3k, where k is some element of z. And what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to show that, well, p of m plus 1 is also going to be true. So p of m plus 1, where m plus 1 cubed plus 2 times m plus 1 is going to equal 3 times some number, um, let's make it l, where l is an element of z. Notice that I can't use k again because I already use k here, and they, they're going to be different multiplications here. So this one might be 5, this one might be 10 or something. We don't know. So we have to use a different letter. All right, so basically I just need to show that this part right here is going to equal 3 times some integer, and that will give me enough evidence to prove um, <clears throat> that this is true, the whole thing is true. So let's factor out this, the bottom here. So m plus 1 cubed, well, what's that going to equal? I'm going to do m plus 1 times the uh, squared term, so that's going to be m squared plus 2m plus 1, and then I can simplify this, so plus 4, 2m plus 2. And then now let's uh, simplify it all the way. We'll get m cubed plus 2m squared plus m plus m squared plus 2m plus 1 plus 2m plus 2. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. Combine like terms finally. We'll get m cubed plus 2m squared plus m squared, so plus 3m squared plus how many m's? 1, it looks like 5m, plus 3. All right, so how can I somehow make this better? Well, I need to use this step here. So how can I use this step here? It says m, square, m cubed plus 2m. I know that that equals 3 times k. Well, I can break that up. I can make that happen. So I can write m cubed plus 2m, and then I'll be left with um, 3m squared plus 3m plus 3. <clears throat> and this is looking good, right? Because I know m cubed <clears throat> plus 2m equals 3k. So I have 3k plus 3 times m squared plus 3m plus 3. And now I can do my last step. I can say, well, that equals 3 times k plus m squared plus m plus 1. And I know that this is going to be an integer. This is going to be an element of z because I'm only working with integers here. And then so I can write this as 3 times some integer L. And that makes that means it's true for all of them because I showed that, well, it's true for n equals 1. Then the inductive step, I said, well, if it's true for some number k, then is it true for k plus 1? And we showed it is. 
So that shows that, well, it's going to be true for everything because it's true for 1 and it's true for k plus 1. So that will work all the way and you can count all the way to infinity. So we've done the proof. Hopefully now you kind of understand what mathematical induction is, what it's good for, what it's not good for. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for watching.